<laughs> Wait, that's not even a slur that I've heard of. I mentioned this in a previous episode, but I've already always hated reality TV shows. Kevin, not me. I love it. Re- no, I, I also hate reality. The, my, I, 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 I like love to hate reality TV shows. Like I, with my wife, will will watch some truly terrible reality television. Like there's a, I think I've brought it up before. There's a show on Netflix called Marriage or Mortgage, which is objectively terrible like it is a terrible show but oh my god can i not stop watching and i worry that if i get into any of these bigger shows like the bachelor or any of this that i'll be like i love it and i'll judge myself so heavily that i'll just be filled with so much self-loathing that i'll eventually take my own life (laughs) that's just a joke it's good that we get that sort of joke right in the beginning episode so everyone don't even know where i'm going with this just digging myself a hole the format of the show, if you're new and you're wondering what the f*** is going on, Kevin wrote it, I read it, that's the show, let's go. Unfortunately, because a previous girlfriend I was living with was a huge fan of them, I've watched more episodes of shows like America's ne- Next Top Model and The Real World than I ever thought I'd have been able to tolerate. But even in the earliest days of reality TV, there were always questions over how real any of this tribe was. There were always rumors of staged events, manufactured drama, and selective editing to unfairly portray the participants. Of course, these rumors all existed because they were absolutely absolutely true. During the 2007 to 2008 Writers Guild of America strike, there was even a debate over whether editors on reality shows should be credited as writers. Oh my god, that's like fair though, because they're constructing a story. I think that's totally fair. Like that, I imagine like some of the most creative editing must be for reality TV shows, because they've got to take all of this nonsense drivel and somehow turn it into like a compelling storyline. Which is kind of wild. After all, they had to take hundreds of hours of boring unscripted footage and use it to create some sort of interesting narrative. Me and Kevin, same page. And since people already struggle with nuanced characters in scripted shows, it's only natural that the editors would create inaccurate, exaggerated, and largely one-dimensional versions of the cast members to make things easier on the audience. Similarly, here in the real world, two people who hate each other are going to spend as little time together as possible. That doesn't make for good television, though, so producers will manufacture situations to force the enemies to be in proximity of one another in the hopes of catching something exciting on film. (coughs) This was all highlighted rather bizarrely in the series finale of The Hills, a spin-off of Laguna Beach. I've never heard of Laguna Beach and I've never heard of The Hills. I am shocked. Shocked. I won't bore you with what the show is about because, oh my god, is it awful and I hate that I watched every episode. (laughs) Oh, Kevin, no. But the final shot of the series featured two characters saying goodbye, followed by the camera panning out to reveal that everything was being filmed on a soundstage and none of the buildings or scenery were real. For years, fans of the show had questioned how much of it was real and how much was fake, and the final scene was designed basically just to piss everyone off by making them question it even more. Whoa, 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 really? Aren't they being like, nah, it's all fake? It's a soundstage. Like, if you thought it was, like, filmed on the beach or wherever. Wait, what was it called? The Hills? Beverly Hills? Something like If you thought it was filmed in, like, a real house, and then they're like, boom, soundstage, bitches. That is them saying that it's all fake. Just before we continue with today's video, let me tell you about something fantastic. And that is today's sponsor. It's a new one. And that is Lumen. It's a secret weapon to understanding your body better and feeling amazing every day. So... You might be wondering, well, what exactly is it, fact boy? Well, it's like a personal metabolic coach that you have right in your pocket. It measures your metabolism through your breath, giving you insights into whether you're burning fats or carbs. Why does that matter? Well, imagine your metabolism is the engine that powers your body. Optimal metabolic health means smoother weight management, better energy levels, and improved fitness results. And that's where Lumen comes in. They've got over 55 million metabolic measurements logged, so they stand as an authority in the field. It's very easy. All you have to do is you turn it on by holding the button here it will connect to your phone just like that and then you uh, say that you want to take a measurement i just had lunch so i'll click after eating and it says take a seat relax you click let's go And now it will tell me, after a little bit of analysis, go on now, 
Oh, I'm right in the middle. I am burning 55% fat and 45% carbs. What it does then is it gives you nutritional information so you can improve your diet. So you can get a free metabolic health score by going to go.lumen.me forward slash blaze or just click the link below and you'll also get $100 off your Lumen. So click below, get $100 off and start improving your health today. And now back to the show. It usually is until after these shows have already aired that we get some glimpse into what was really going on behind the scenes where the drama was often so much more real than on camera. Honorable mention, last chance at love. This one only gets an honorable mention because while it all should have been behind the scenes sort of stuff, the nature of this particular show meant that it actually was seen on air. The Joe Schmo Show was a fantastic reality show form slash form of torture. What? Matt? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> in which one man's life was turned into the Truman Show. It was portrayed as a survival style competition, but everybody living in a house instead of an island. Also, every single wait, how is it Survivor then? It's like I live in a house. It's not like I'm on Survivor. Everything's there. It's like I go to the fridge, get a snack, have some water out of a tap. You know, normal human sh Jokes on you. I'm into that sh stuff. He, he said stuff. Also, every single person on the show was an actor, except for one real contestant. The show featured early performances from Kristen Wiig, Lance Kraut, and the guy who plays cricket on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You guys, you gotta make it sexy. Hips and nips. I know who none of these people are. Before they were famous enough to be recognized, it's a really entertaining show, even if some of it was a bit mean-spirited. But the show was a huge hit, at least by Spike TV standards, so the network decided to try again. This time, it was going to be a fake dating show grimly titled Last Chance at Love. It was a combination of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, with suitors vying for the love of either the show's bachelor or bachelorette. You're a boy. You're a, you're a boy. You're correct. Within the context of this fake show, the twist was that the man and woman everyone were competing over had previously dated, and during the finale, they would be given the option to ignore all of the suitors and just marry each other. What is going on? <laughs> what the f is going on? What? It, it, Reality TV is bizarre, isn't it? The real twist was... The real twist was that... The real twist... <laughs> the real twist was that, again, it was just the Truman Show, this time with two real people amidst all the actors. Wait, can you imagine if you're on this show and it's like, Yes, and I want to marry Stephanie! And then they're like... Oh no, Stephanie's actually Laura, and she's an actress, so this girl that you fell in love with and now want to marry? Not real. It's fiction. It's a total fabrication. It's a fake. We conned you. We got you. I imagine there would be a lawsuit there. Little did the casting director realize, but they f***ed up big time by selecting Ingrid Weiss as the woman they were planning to dupe. In the filming of the first episode, all of the female suitors were lined up outside the house awaiting the bachelor's arrival. Ingrid began making small talk with the woman next to her. Asking how she got on the show. The actress, who was going to be eliminated before even entering the house, replied that her agent had given her a call the day before, and immediately alarm bells started going off for Ingrid. She was entirely too smart for this nonsense and was questioning and was questioning everything before it had even started. Throughout the wow, the, the producers did a terrible job, though. Did you not expect them to chat? Did you not expect her to ask questions of the other contestants? And then they're like, oh no, I'm an actor. Literally first thing out of their mouth. Like Producers, do your job. You have one job. Failure. Throughout the first day in the house, Ingrid would make multiple explicit references to feeling like she was on the Truman Show. I thought I was on, like, the Truman, the Truman Show. Things got really bad when one of the actors was telling a long, heartfelt story to Ingrid. In the middle of the story, her battery pack died, and she immediately stopped telling the story and waited for a tech to swap out the battery for a mic before continuing. This was one of many giant red flags for Ingrid, and by about the second day, the producers had to pull her aside and talk to her off camera. They're going to be like, Ingrid, you got to play along. Ingrid, Ingrid, I, she's not an actor though. Like, what are you expecting from her? Since they clearly weren't fooling her, the producers offered Ingrid the opportunity to join the cast instead. They would just find a reason to disqualify one of the other contestants and replace her with Amanda Norton as their new stooge. The plan worked perfectly, as Amanda never caught on, nor did her male counterpart. Not even in the season finale, when they really, really should have. The you can't fix stupid. They just got, they just replaced her with someone a bit more gullible. <laughs> God.
The entire cast was brought back for the final decision from The Bachelor and Bachelorette, some of whom were eliminated before Amanda joined the show. Among those was the stereotypical drunk girl Rita, played by Natasha Leggero, and when they came out, Amanda excitedly said to everyone around her, I know her, I know Rita, she's a comedian out in LA. No! The entire cast became visibly panicked and forgot their lines, fearing that the show's big reveal was about to be ruined, but Amanda was unable to put two and two together. <laughs> She has a different name! Once again, the Joe Schmoes took the reveal well, and they both received $100,000 for their troubles, as did Ingrid for successfully joining the cast and not giving away the game. Of course, when Ingrid was taken behind the scenes and let in on the secret, the producers did make her pr promise to shut the f up about the Truman Show already so the others wouldn't figure it out. That's what the 100 grand was for. Ingrid did well from this. The Apprentice. Before he was the 45th president of the United States, and after he made a name for himself as a billionaire who would have earned more money just retiring and putting his cash into the S&P 500 than putting it in the dozens of failed business ventures named after himself, Donald Trump was a reality TV star on The Apprentice. In the off chance anybody isn't familiar with the show, it was a competition in which the winner would receive a job working for Donald Trump as executive vice president of one of his projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was how the show was billed anyway, but we'll come back to the prize in just a moment. Wait. So they, I, I mean, I, I figure this is like a bit weird, right? I've never seen The American Apprentice, but I watched the first few seasons of uh, The UK Apprentice like 20 years ago or whatever. And like when it was first done, I was like, oh, wow. Like our Donald Trump, Alan Sugar, is actually going to hire a guy to work like, oh, what the f*** was his company? Amstrad. He's going to work. For, he's going to work at Amstrad and be an apprentice. But then the next year. They do the show again and he gets a new apprentice and it's like so where do he, the apprentice just works for like one year i thought the point of an apprentice was to fi find someone then apprentice under you and then like put them into your company and be like your next person like your right hand man or whatever so they're all right hand men i mean at some point it's gonna be like it's just a game show there were no shortage of controversy surrounding the show, but one of the earliest and craziest stories came from the first season episode, Duplex. The challenge for the episode was basically to flip an apartment, which was stupid on a number of levels. First of all, if the goal is to hire an executive vice president of a property, I'm not sure that personally renovating and renting an apartment is a particularly useful task to prepare someone for the job. No, it's not at all. It's a completely different thing. But even if we assume there was some broader lesson at play here and this was a meaningful test, the teams only had two days for the project. Basically, that's one day to renovate an apartment and one day to find a renter, do a credit check, and sign the paperwork. Needless to say, the supposed renovations were far from stellar. One team managed to find a contractor to install a couple of new fixtures, but for the most part, all that happened was that the teams picked up the trash and slapped a fresh coat of paint on any everything. But also, isn't that kind of good? Like, if you manage to find an apartment and you buy it and you you like buy it or whatever, and you get a discount because it looks a bit and then you repaint it and take some fancy photographs and then rent it for more you've not put in any money or time and you've somehow increased the value through like minimal effort this seems like good like if you're making too much effort then you're just is just less profit right the team that had hired the contractor managed to get their apartment rented for $1,650 per month. The old price on the apartment had been $1,500, so they were graded on the 10% price increase. Which isn't bad. For a day's work, you're increasing your monthly income by $150 every month for as long as that contract continues. So that actually seems pretty good. It's a day's work, with the 1500 cost of the contractor being completely ignored. Well, okay, so it's going to take you like 10 months to break even. But that ain't bad. That ain't bad! Because that's how the pros do business. Luckily, it didn't matter that their extra expenses weren't factored into the equation because they lost the challenge anyway. They had only been given until 5pm on the second day to rent the apartment, and the second team hadn't found a taker. It didn't help the potential renters walked into a room that reeked of paint fumes, only to have half a dozen overeager salespeople demand they sign the paperwork that day and assure them the paint would be dry in four hours or so. At 4.51pm, they had given up when a woman suddenly walked through the door and rented the apartment, at $1,525, a 27% increase over the original $1,200 rent. 
Again, that's phenomenal if it's real. After initially thinking that they wouldn't be able to move the apartment at all, they suddenly had become the clear winners. Of course, the lease that the woman signed was completely fake. She didn't need to rent the apartment because she already had rented it a month earlier. It's unclear how many people involved in the show actually knew this, but one of the two apartments they had been provided with wasn't actually on the market. Lies. Oh, lies! That second one had become available a little over a month earlier when the previous tenant jumped out of the window and it was immediately snatched up. Good lord, that got dark rather suddenly, didn't it? The landlord just had a wait to move so that the apprentice could use it to film and they gave her $2,000 in new furniture for the inconvenience. Like, I'm furnishing a house. How much furniture does $2,000 buy? <laughs> Wanna do it on his bed? You know, make him sleep in our genetic filth? Most importantly, she was absolutely not paying $1,525 in rent. She could have agreed on camera to any number they wanted because her actual rent had already been agreed upon and this little TV cameo wasn't changing that. The producers of the show obviously knew that this was all fake, but it didn't change the fact that the person eliminated from the show that episode was determined by the winner of a stupid challenge with fraudulent results. You're fired. Happy to say. Then again, that describes pretty much every episode of every reality competition. Sure, these competitive shows may feature a lot of challenges that are rigged from the start, but it's all worth it for the prize at the end, right? Well, in the case of The Apprentice, probably not. Yeah, this is my question. Like, where, are you actually Donald Trump's apprentice? And does he have dozens of apprentices? I don't know. I mean, it was still worth it because $250,000, but the executive vice president job was definitely not worth it because that job was also not real. The actual job given to the winners of The Apprentice was just to be a media puppet for Trump. This position did come with its own office in one of Trump's buildings, but it was a tiny windowless office next to the office of Melania Trump's secretary. Not like they needed a fancy office anyway. All the winners of The Apprentice needed was a calendar to keep track of all their press appearances and speaking engagements to promote Trump and the show. Word started to break after the second season aired that the jobs being offered were entirely fictional and Trump didn't even seem to deny the claims. The first season's winner was supposed to be in charge of Trump Tower in Chicago, but as Trump said, it's a little bit too much to ask someone to be the president of an $800 million building oh, when they haven't had that kind of experience. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can't just be like, and now he's running nearly a billion dollars worth of real estate. It doesn't work like that. You need experience. You can't just do it that way. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. While that is a completely valid point, maybe you shouldn't have advertised that exact job as the prize for the TV show. Or you should have had more qualified contestants. Or you could have the challenges on the show being at least tangentially related to the kind of experience that would be need for the allegedly top job offered. Then again, the Chicago skyscraper lost hundreds of millions of dollars and Trump defaulted on the loan, so maybe he should have just put the apprentice winner in charge. <laughs> yeah, like retrospect, maybe you've done a better job, who knows? That way you could at least blame the failure on someone else. Big Brother. Of all the reality TV, TV shows in the world, I think the only one I've ever seen, I saw Big Brother season one when I was a kid, and it was an interest, because it was an interesting concept, and then I don't think I ever saw it again, and I don't want to. Why watch one hour of reality TV each week when you can live stream at 24 hours per day, flipping between all the different cameras in the house? I don't want to. Or if you only wanted to watch what the editors curate for you, it's still three hours of TV per week. Good lord, how do you squeeze so much content out of something so boring? At least in America, maybe it's different for the UK version. I don't remember, but it definitely wasn't like three hours a week. And it's the UK where this entry actually takes place, because season 17, Jesus Christ, of Big Brother UK featured none other than the top G himself, Andrew Tate. Oh yeah, wait, isn't this the, like, Andrew Tate got kicked out of Big Brother, right? Because of some alleged allegations against him or was it like a video of him hitting a woman or something like that allegedly i don't know let's find out for about a week anyway tate was originally an other housemate which i guess are people that are on the show but aren't actually a part of the big brother house they have to earn their way into the house it sounds very dumb and complicated and none of it ultimately mattered since tate was quickly removed from the show because of things that were going on behind the scenes though tate was a championship kickboxer he was largely unknown to anybody except fans of that sport oh how times have changed for the worse. <laughs> so, once he was on the show, people started digging, because that's what they do. It didn't take long for viewers to realize that Tate had made a large number of racist and homophobic tweets, which did not go over well. Prick. Oh, okay, I thought it was something different. Never mind. I mean, that's bad as well. It didn't take too long for British viewers to realize how racist some of these tweets were. Any Americans like me would have just needed to Google what the f*** a 
fuck sock it was, because that is definitely not a slur that we have over here. <laughs> Wait, that's not even a slur that I've heard of. The public turned on Tate quickly, and things only got worse when a video of him was leaked. And by leaked, I mean he sent it to all of his friends, and they sent it to their friends, and eventually it wound up on the website for The Sun. The video allegedly depicted Tate beating a woman. But since a newspaper has been willing to leave it up on their website for running on eight years now, I mean, how bad could this video really be? For the sake of this episode, I decided that I would watch to find out. To be clear, I'm extremely biased against Andrew Tate. You think you're hot in a champagne glass, but you're really cold diarrhea in a Dixie cup. Yeah, I I'd be surprised if Kevin came out as like a f Tate head or whatever. Then I'd be like, really, my dude? Because <laughs> Andrew Tate's like, in my opinion, an objective piece of. I realize I contradicted myself by saying objective, but in my opinion, he's objectively a piece of I think he's a disgusting piece of and a dangerous con man. Yes! And even if all of the allegations of sex trafficking are lies, which seems very unlikely in Kevin's opinion, I still think he's a horrible person that should be in prison forever. Yeah, I don't know about being in prison forever if the allegations against him are not true, but I do agree that he does seem to be a horrible person. And because of that bias, I was absolutely outraged when I watched the video and saw how tame and meaningless it was. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. I'm sure the video of Tate whipping a girl with his belt was beyond scandalous to your stereotypical repressed British person, but it really wasn't that bad. As far as BDSM goes, it was pretty mild, and it's obvious that it was consensual. Oh, really? Okay. Wait, that's why he got kicked off? If that's the case, then the racist tweets are, uh, like, more bad. Worse. That's the word I'm looking for. Worse. For Christ's sake, the girl was laughing the entire time, even after being ripped. Holy you media you like in my mind he there's a video the reason got take take it got kicked off big brother because he beat a woman and there was a video of it you've been evicted from the big brother house turns out that that's nonsense don't want to defend andrew tate here but it sounds like he got a bit of a rough deal on that one defending tate literally wants to make me vomit but this video was far from violent abuse but channel 5 disagreed and as soon as they saw the video he was kicked off the show honestly i can't blame them even if it was all clearly consensual it was still a video in which tate told a girl that he'd kill her if she messaged another guy there were a lot of vanilla people out there who weren't going to understand what they were seeing and were going to send the station a mountain of angry letters so it was just easier to kick him off the show rather than risk alienating their audience he was a remarkably unpopular contestant anyways so it's not like he was in danger of winning the show. No, but he does. Like, Tate's thing is, is he's a villain, right? That's why he's popular. He's like, he leans into being a villain. Look, you scrawny little turd. I was a professional villain while you were training garbage bail kids. That was Channel 5's side, anyway, of what happens. But Tate had a different version of events. You see, he wanted to be a part of the main house, not one of the other housemates. So Tate started scheming and devised a plan to become part of the main cast. The only problem was that, just like we can watch the Big Brother house 24-7, the prisoners on Big Brother are able to watch the other housemates. They saw his scheming and were on to his plans and immediately it caused problems. There were several altercations that came close to becoming physical fights, altercations that never made it to air. According to Tate's versions of events, he had been pulled aside by the producers and told that he wasn't allowed to hit anybody. That should obviously go without saying, but they meant he couldn't fight back even if other, another person hit him first. If someone else attacked him, he was just supposed to stand there and take it until security pulled the person off of him. This was because Tate's experience as an actual fighter would have resulted in some pretty severe hospital bills if a real fight broke out no it wouldn't kevin because we have a health service in the uk we don't pay if we get beaten up they just treat us and send us home for free <laughs> tate would not agree to this saying that if somebody had hit him he was going to hit them back he explained all of this in a facebook post as being the real reason why he was kicked off the show of course channel 5 naturally responded they put out a clarifying statement to say that literally everything tate said was a lie and that he absolutely was kicked off of the show because of his sex tape realistically either story would have been justification to throw him off the show but there's a third possibility as well in 2015 the year before appearing on big brother tate was arrested multiple times once for assault and once for rape. Neither arrest resulted in charges, nor did any of the claims from two former employees of Tate's cam girl business that he was exploiting, assaulting, and raping them. But according to a report from Vice, producers of Big Brother were made aware of all of these allegations and that these claims were the real reason Tate was booted from the show. How the f are you getting on a reality TV show if you've got arrests on your record? And I know no charges are brought, but I've had like when like particularly big companies wanted to work with me or whatever they like run a background check on you that is pretty thorough 
Like, like, this would come up, no? <laughs> The following year, in 2017, Tate moved to Romania to operate his camgirl business there. By his own admission, this decision was made in large part to flee the existing charges in England, and because he believed Romania was a lawless wasteland where he could do anything he wanted to women without fear of reprisal. <laughs> Romania's in the EU, right? There's going to be extradition, no? I hear that's currently working out really well for him, and it's a good thing too, since Romania is regarded as having one of, if not the worst prison systems in Europe. Ah! <laughs> Oh no, what have you done? It sure would be a shame if Tate had to spend the next few decades in a Romanian prison. Oh, it would be a real shame, wouldn't it, Kevin? I think you and I can both agree on the fact that that would be such a terrible outcome and we'd all be so disappointed. Thanks for watching. Good lord, how do you squeeze so much content out of something so boring?